convention and compromise. Vocab or key terms, great compromise, and the prefix compromise. But first we need to start with some financial problems. In 1781, money printed during the war was depreciated to almost nothing. Almost nothing. Unable to collect taxes, based upon the Articles of Confederation, both Congress and the states had been able to print their own money. But with nothing to back up their money in value, the worth of these dollars plummeted to nearly nothing. You can run a dollar through a photocopy machine, which by the way is federally against the law and you can go to prison, but that doesn't mean it's worth anything. There has to be some sort of backbone. And in this time period, it was mostly gold. There were huge debts from the war. The military pay was owed, all the soldiers needed money. The states, following the Articles of Confederation, were asked for the money, but only one-sixth of the money needed was ever given. So that leads us to taxes. The Confederation, the Articles of Confederation, or the Confederation Congress, created a Department of Finance, and they wanted to collect a 5% tax on everything that was imported, anything that came in, to help pay the national debt, to pay for the war. But remember, that requires a change to the Articles of Confederation and all 13 states needed to approve. Rhode Island, the smallest state, refused to agree. A second effort later failed. Once again, Rhode Island refused to agree to a 5% tax. So, it results in an economic depression. Southern plantations had been damaged during the war. Trade fell. British were not willing to trade with us. And they closed down the West Indies to the Americas. We have actual currency shortages were occurring. People were starting to trade other things other than money because it really was worth nothing, nothing at all. And so we're just economically struggling to make ends meet following the Revolutionary War. This particularly difficult for farmers because they didn't have any place to sell their products. They can't ship them to Britain. Britain doesn't want them. So they have problems paying their taxes. And at the time, state officials, and even today, seize their land to pay off their debt through farmers in jail. Now, if you can't pay your taxes, you get thrown in jail. It still happens today. The problem was there was deep resentment. Farmers viewed the new government as just another form of tyranny. They wanted the government to issue paper money, make policies, to relieve debtors, to benefit them. All of this was to benefit the farmers. But if the farmers are not productive, think about the struggles for the rest of the country. So we have a huge conflict coming up, the first major conflict after we declare independence. So the first major conflict that we have in 1786 when a group of angry farmers led by Daniel Shays forced the courts in Massachusetts to close. Their argument was if the courts are closed they cannot confiscate farmers land. So in January 1787 Shays, Daniel Shays led a thousand of these farmers to confiscate arms and ammunition from the federal arsenal. They rebelled and it frightened many Americans because they were worried about whether the central government could control this unrest and prevent violence. Their government was not set up to control inside forces, domestic forces, people rebelling inside the country. So that was a huge challenge. Now, Shays' rebellion resulted in a call for change. The government 
in all honesty, we've been able to protect the people from this rebellion. What stops the rebellion is George Washington. George Washington collects some um, of his former troops as part of the Revolutionary War and asks them to help him put down this rebellion. And so, while some were satisfied with the government, most believed that the government was peaceful, especially after Shays' Rebellion. Well, two of the Americans that were very active in changing the Articles of Confederation were James Hamilton, or James Madison, I'm sorry, who's on the top, and Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton proposed at a convention in Philadelphia that possible changes needed to be made. The constitution of the federal government adequate to the needs of the union must be created. So, in Philadelphia, May 1787, 55 delegates from all 13 states and all professions and ages met together. Three delegates were under the age of 30, and Benjamin Franklin was the oldest, over 80 years old. Now, this was one of the hottest summers on record. Just imagine well clothes, wigs, and no air conditioning. Take a sniff of what Philadelphia must have smelled like. Washington, George Washington, was voted as the presiding officer over this convention. It was closed doors. It was to be kept completely secret from the, from the public. And again, remember, hottest summers, wool clothes, no air conditioning, no deodorant. It must have just been miserable. It was determined that each state had a single vote, and a simple majority vote would be sufficient to make all decisions. Not all 13 states had to agree for the majority vote. So we're looking at seven to six, possibly in the vote. This is a picture of Washington and the Constitution. So the question is, do you think, why do you think they chose to keep the proceedings a secret? And were they correct in that decision? Was it a wise decision to keep this information from the public? We're gonna talk about this in class a little bit. Now I wanna give you a little history on James Madison because he's known as the father of the Constitution. He was a student of government. He loved government. He studied history, he studied politics, he studied economics of the various governments throughout history, not just, you know, British government, but governments throughout history. He was looking for a strong but fair government, and he was mostly concerned about protecting the rights of the people from the misuse of power of the government. He saw that the king and parliament had misused their power. So he established a system full of checks and balances that he thought would protect the American people the best. And he designs one of the two plans that would be presented in the Constitutional Convention. 